I have my stopwatch here. Take your time. Don't tell the preacher that ever. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take you to class today. Those of you who ever attended a Chicago public school realize that you could not graduate from eighth grade until you successfully completed what's called the preamble to the Constitution. Today they asked me to speak and pray on the vision for the nation, but in order to establish what that vision is, the eyes must be clear, for there is a perception in all people, and what we used to see as sin, we all were on one accord. Fast forward to today, and good is now bad, and bad is now good. So this nation, need to have a vision, then the nation must be established first in who they are. So in school we learn about the judicial system. It's a system of courts that interprets and applies the law in the name of the state. The judiciary also provides a mechanism for the resolution of disputes under the doctrine of the separation of powers. The judiciary generally does not make the law. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all of us. Yet today, the highest court in the land is meeting to reestablish and determine what marriage is today. The second one is called the legislature. The United States is the by Camaro legislative of the federal government of the United States, consisting of two houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Two houses together, but unfortunately, a house divided cannot stand. Then there's the executive branch, which executives and enforces the laws, is headed by the president and the vice president, in addition, it includes the executive department, which deals with general topics and the heads of departments who are known as secretaries. Each department, in turn, is divided into a number of bodies, which are known as agencies, services, commissions, councils, bureaus, authorities, offices, administrations, and boards. And the president, the man that sits in the helm of the free world, he takes an oath of office. It is an affirmation required by the United States Constitution. Before the president began the executive office, the wording is specified in Article 2, Second, Section 1, Clause 8. Before he entered on the executive of his office, he shall take the following oath. He takes in his hand a constitution that God has given us. And with that hand, he says, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. In his right hand is the Bible. In his left hand is the Constitution of the United States. In the inception of our company, our, our corporation, which is the United States, both of these articles came together and we agreed. Fast forward now, they are divided. So, in eighth grade, we learned about this article, which is called the preamble. And in it it says, we the people. Those three words are absolutely important and vital. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, serve domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense and promote a 
Uh huh. And I'm testing y'all because you know that's not going to ourselves and our posterity, do or day, and what? You know this article, don't you? Yes. What about this article? Three words in this article tells us we are together no matter what happens. If you were born in the United States, you are the we, the people. In this article, those three words that you rarely hear today need to be quoted over and over. These three words are, if my people. Yes, come on. We the people, no matter what, no matter what state I was born in, it's with the people. Here's the condition in this If my people. Which are called by my name. Yes. Would humble themselves yes. and pray. Yes. Turn. Yes. Yes. Turn. We tend to take the word turn out of it. Right. <laughs> turn. Now, after the turn happens, then God makes something else happen. A threefold condition brings about a threefold result. Number one, humble. Number two, turn. Then he said, seek my face. If you do these three, God says, I'm going to match it with these three. He says, I'm going to hear from heaven. That's right. I'm going to forgive your sins. And I'm going to heal your hands. These are the conditions. If my people, that's this one. We the people, that's this one. What is the vision of the United States? That vision must be applied by perception. But what is the perception of the people? It is flawed. So the prayers must go forth from the top down. Yes, yes, right, yes. Right, right. Because the enemy attacks from that top, from the head. Because right. if you kill the head, yes. right. you kill the body. Right. Yes. Right. Right. So in that house, which is colored white, yet created or built by blacks, <laughs> there it stands a man. Or eventually, maybe a woman, depending on how you go. <laughs> sits in that office. They must determine whether they are with God or they are against Him. It is you who are the remnant of this nation. You must come together in intercessory prayer and determine in yourself can I pray? for the man sitting in that office, right. that he might open his eyes and lead this nation back to God. Shall we pray? Lord, hear our cry. Yes. Without a vision, the people perish. Yes. Oh God, our country have been hit in the optic nerve. Yes. We have been overtaken by cataracts. And our nation need a spiritual laser surgery come on, come on. so that we might return to our first love. Yes, yes. God give us 2020 vision. Yes, yes, yes. Satan has shut up the mouths of the wailing women, the moaners, and the intercessors. But by Gideon, you have left the remnant, a small nation of one that we can become overtakers of this, whom we call and evil powers. We are overcomers, for Satan is already defeated. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach against any people. God, we love you today, and we intercede on behalf of our nation. Open up our eyes, oh God, and remove the fear in us. So that we might return back to God and do our first works all over again. Yes, yes, yes. Return us back to you, God. And when we do that to this day, yes. you said you will hear us. Yes. You will hear our prayer.
prayers. Yes. You will forgive us. Yes. And you will heal our pain. Yes. Hear us, oh God. Yes. That is our prayer. Yes. In Jesus' name. existing and God wants to get his people to a place where we're actually living yeah. and living life. When I pray, I will be, I will be specific, specific to God, to God as, to what I want. as to what I want. In Philippians 4 and 6, you will find something in there. And when we pray, we have to be specific to God. Any parent who has a child that comes to them and tells the parent, I want something, and the parent says, what is it that you want? And the child says, I want whatever you want me to want. <laughs> That child would not get anything from the parent because the parent does not know what the child wants. There is a word called homologio, which means same word. When we pray to God, we give God back his word and God moves according to his word. When we rebuke the enemy, we rebuke him in the name of Jesus and he recognizes the name that Jesus gave us to rebuke him with. And so he pays not attention to us, but he pays attention to the word of God that has gone forth before him. And the word of God is what God watches over. Right. So let's look at something. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, be careful for nothing. But in, let me say in. In. In everything by prayer and supplication. Then he says, with with thanksgiving. Why are you thanking God? You're thanking Him because you know that He's already going to do what you're asking Him to do. Because you're coming to Him according to His Word. And the Bible says if we pray to Him according to His will, He hears us. Yes. And we know that if He hears us, we have the petition that we need of God. We already know that God is going to answer us because we're already coming to God according to His will. So if I said, Daddy, can I have is the daddy's will that I eat? Yes. Daddy gonna say, yes, sir, you can have what you want. Daddy, I want a big man. Because you said I got to eat. <laughs> so be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request, yes. let your request, yes. let your request, let me say, let my request, let my request. be made known unto God. And verse 7 is very interesting and very important. Verse 7 of Philippians 4, 6-7 says, And the peace of God which passes oh. it passes how many oh. all understand is going to do two things keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus yeah. when you in trouble what gets affected first your heart and your mind yeah. when you in darkness what's affected what's affected your heart and your mind when you in trouble in the blackness of the midnight and your back is against the wall and you can't see your way out, what's in trouble? Your heart and your mind. God says, if you pray and be specific, I'm going to keep your heart and your mind. Right. Oh, the can take everything else, but they can't take your heart and your mind because the peace of God which passes even your understanding. This peace of God keeps you. So then he says, Supplicate. Supplicate means to make known your specific need. If you want him to be six feet tall with brown eyes, don't say, God, send me anything. God, I want him six feet tall with brown eyes. <laughs> I knew it was going to get quiet in your life. You pray for that car. You pray for that house. You pray for that child. You pray for that education. Why can't you pray for the home? So he said, supplication to make known your specific need. Pray direct. Tell God what you want. He is your father. Yes. Then when you pray to God, the Bible lets us know to be specific as to what you want. Then he says, to close this out with thanksgiving. We want to be thanking God for number one. We know that he can yes. give us what we ask him for. Yes. And then we know that he will give us what we ask for. So in my conclusion, when you go before the throne of grace yes. and speak to your heavenly father, you have a right through Jesus Christ to 
be specific.